Let's do this. The Cult of Hockey podcast by the faithful. And for the faithful, I'm David Staples of the Edmonton Journal. And I'm here tonight with Bruce McCurdy. Welcome, Bruce. Hey, David. How are you doing tonight? Well, you can tell from the, my, the extra oomph on the old Bruce that I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, feeling pretty good, Bruce. Come back. Come, it's, listen, huge, there's nothing huge. better than a comeback victory against a rival for a playoff spot. When they're desperate to win that game and they get nothing in even strength. Is there anything? There's nothing better than that. It was at the playoff win, of course, but. Right. Well, I got. And Bruce, it's like a playoff game, really. Yeah. More good news. I got a mute button now. Uh-huh. So when I cough. Uh-huh. Just try it. I'm going to try it here, okay? I'm going to hit it. Okay. You can't hear me, right? Perfection. There we go. Now, Sorry. All we Sorry. need now is for you to set up a mute button where I can also mute you. <laughs> and about, and about $100,000 of plastic surgery for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Then we're set. We're good to go. We could be on TV, oh, real TV. Got a face made for radio and a voice made for uh, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is our two good things, two bad things, and two numbers podcast. Bruce, why don't you start it off with your good thing at Edmonton's 3-2 win over the Nashville Predators. Hey, well, I'm thinking we're going to do two good things each because it was such an important win. Uh, but I'm going to single out... Uh, a man who is uh, rapidly becoming a personal favorite because I just love how he's been playing, Josh Archibald, who was just a terror on skates this whole game. Like He was just all over everybody. Six hits in this game. He absolutely smashed a couple of guys with devastation. Like, he hits hard for such a little guy, 5'10", 176. And he hammered, uh, he hammered um, uh, number seven, was it... Uh, uh, Weber early in the game, and he just kept coming and coming. And in some ways, he re- here's your mandatory 1970s sports reference. He reminded me of another right shot, right winger, number 15 for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, Kurt Brackenberry. <laughs> the way he just sort of bowling balls his way around the ice and doesn't let anybody get in his way. I guess early 80s for Brackenberry, come to think of it. But he was, but Brackenberry was hopeless, you know. With the stick, he, he could have played the same game with no stick. Yes. Whereas Archibald made a ton of good plays in this game. Good plays on the penalty kill, aggressive plays, attacking plays. Uh, there was one play where he went to the net front and he, he deflected the shot and he wheeled around for the rebound that he knew was coming. He just didn't quite get to it, but, you know, it was a, a, a move of a guy who knows what he's doing around the net. And just such a hard-nosed competitor. And uh, tonight... I thought he particularly stood out right from the early going of the game and really in all aspects of the game. Between all that uh, uh, two and a half minutes of penalty kill, 14 minutes at even, you know, and yeah. no gimmies, no no cherry time with anybody and, and uh, uh, winning his portion of the game or at least breaking even on it, which is really his job uh, over the course of, uh, of uh, the season. Is to is to saw off on his part of the game, and if you can do that also on the penalty kill, well, that's a, that's really a win. Yeah. So he led uh, he led the team with six hits, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you know what? He, you know the the player who perfected that game in the seventies was Bob Houndog Kelly, I think. <laughs> He's the ultimate practitioner of that mm-hmm. hard boiled, hard nosed hitting, effective style of mm-hmm. hockey. And Archibald, you're right. That that is the game that Archibald's playing. He is not much with the puck, but to give him credit, mm-hmm. when he was with McDavid, he went for it. He wasn't mm-hmm. sitting back. He was trying to make plays. He was trying to get in there and join in the attack. So good for his eagerness there as well. And I really like him on the checking line with Shea. And I think that those two guys, especially with with Negard uh, as the third member, that is a really strong checking line for the Oilers. And um, I'm looking forward to Negard coming back. Mm-hmm. Got some cat well, problems. He yeah. had he had also. Uh, a big play, like he was out there at the end of the game. Tippett really trusts him. I uh, remember there was two times earlier this season where I said in the podcast at the end of the game that he made a big defensive play, at the very end of a, a one-goal win. Uh, one was against Montreal, um, and there was like two two in a week where he uh, one was against Vancouver. Anyway, tonight, with about 15 seconds left, he... Um, uh, 
he nailed Philip Forsberg out in the neutral zone, kind of took him out of the play, and then he came all the way back, and Nashville set up a shot, and uh, Archibald blocked it. It broke his stick, but he blocked the shot, and then he, so he dropped the stick and just got in and mixed it up, and the last two seconds was just a scrum in front of Edmonton's net. Man, oh, man. Talk about a heart-pounding finish to the game. That's how the Preds play, eh? Prompting my favorite tweet after the end of a game like that. Never in doubt. Hashtag never in doubt. Because, of course, it was in doubt right down to the final point one of a second. But uh, uh, Archibald, was he was big early, middle, and late. Like I, just, I liked everything about his game, even without points. You know, he did everything in his job description and more, in my eye. You know, the scoring chance that he had is a segue to my one of my good things. Um, on that play, Caleb Jones was able to get the puck and make a quick move with it and put it into the slot area. And Bruce, that is the that is the whole game plan, it seems, for a lot of teams against the Edmonton Oilers. There's a lot of teams, if you lack that kind of, you know, really, really high-end skill, like Drysaddle and McDavid provide, mm-hmm. what you're hoping for in the NHL these days, these days, it seems to me, is pinch like crazy, mm-hmm. forecheck like crazy, get the puck then back to your demon, who with a clever uh, head fake or move, movement of the stick or walking the line, somehow get the puck towards the slot, not necessarily net towards, with the whole idea of cramming that area and getting a goal. And Nashville did that to perfection tonight. They almost won the game with that play tonight. They had their two goals on that. But Caleb Jones um, did that for the Oilers. And what the Oilers are lacking, Bruce, is that tactic and that play. And they don't have that play because they do not have enough defensemen who are capable of making that play at the blue line. But they have Caleb Jones, they have Ethan Bear, and they have Oscar Kleffbaum. All three of those guys consistently make that play. Matt Benning often makes that play. But you know who doesn't make that play? Adam Larson and Darnell Nurse do not make that play. And if Darnell Nurse ever wants that $8 million a year contract, well, okay, work on that, Darnell. Work on that for a little while. I'm getting into my bad thing a little bit early here, but so I won't go on about it. But mm-hmm. the good thing is that they do have some guys that can do it, and um, they didn't. They even had fewer guys who could do that in years past, in recent years. But at least they have Baron Jones who can do it now, and Caleb Jones is really good at it. Actually, that's his. That's his probably his main offensive game is that you know punching the puck into the slot area for that chance, which Archibald got on that play. That was Bear. That was Jones' shot. Yeah, okay. Basically, yeah, I did I say focused, Jones or did I, was, I say Bear? Yeah, you said you said Jones. And I, yeah. I just was focusing on Archibald on the play, and I couldn't remember who made the play yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ethan Bear, uh, I mean, he had uh, um, just one official shot on net tonight, but he sure had a lot of good passes. And, boy, this is, a, I think, might be the best game defensively I can remember from Bear where he just won battles and was taking pucks off of guys, lifting their sticks and taking the puck and winning the puck and then getting it getting it going. And, and uh, he was, uh, uh, he came out, I think he was pretty pumped right off the off the top, right from that Cree National Anthem. Boy, that was, uh, <laughs> did you see him? They showed, they zeroed in on Ethan on the bench, smiling as, they, uh, as the uh, gal was singing the uh, O Canada and Cree. It was quite a moment, actually. And, yeah, uh, he he came out just early in the first period. Had just had a fantastic shift that was like a textbook, um, high you know, um, instructional video type quality of plays. Just just simple good plays. Get the puck, pass the puck. Steal the puck, control the puck, pass the puck. And he, anyway, yeah, he and Clefbaum are fantastic. They had both had really good games, and Bear Bear had a couple turnovers. But when you handle the puck as much as he does. Mm-hmm. That is going to happen. Yep. Um, Bruce, his key, his, key, uh, his key clearance came in the third period. The Oilers got a penalty. Um, McDavid, I think, got it. it was, and it was a really tense moment of the game because they had just scored, and you're just thinking, oh, God. Here's where Nashville gets one of these another dink goals from the point, you know, when yep. they just dink 100%. it in and then slam it. And um, Bear won the puck behind the net, chipped it off the guy's stick, fished it out, and iced the puck. It was just yeah, a he really, did that a bunch. Really fine defensive play from Ethan Bear. Like he, yeah, he's a real favorite of mine as well. I, I mean, mm-hmm. I think all all Oilers fans just uh, have really become enamored with this hockey player. Well, I'm liking uh, that on the defensive side of the puck. If he's going to steal and win puck battles that way, uh, then the odd, you know, the odd turn. If you balance the odd turnover with uh, 
Uh, more than the odd takeaway, which had two official takeaways in this game, uh, four block shots, and he was uh, he was a strong uh, presence in the in the D zone, and I thought on the penalty kill. So uh, that's I mean his passing has always been a strength, but uh, if he rounds up the, the part of his game without the puck, boy, sky's the limit. That was my main concern when he's in the minors was his defensive play, but I haven't had that concern hardly at all this year. He's been every good as the every bit as good defensively as Clefbaum and Nurse. Bruce, what is your second good thing of the night? Okay, uh, my second good thing. Uh, well, I mean, is, I don't think we, Leon? we can't let the night go without Leon yeah, yeah. being referenced in this cast maybe more than once, I don't know. But he, uh, 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 I thought in the first period he had a little bit the heavy legs again. And he's had him this week after being first star of the week in the NHL last week and being first star in three uh, three games in a row. Uh, he had two tough games, especially, I thought, um, Thursday against San Jose. Leon you know, just didn't really have it going on. And tonight, first period, I thought, same, and then he just raised it about three gears and away he went and uh, uh, started peppering shots on... Uh, uh, I think six shots, but also uh, um, just making things happen in various ways. And the, the longer the game went on, the better he got. And in the third period, with the Oilers down 2-1 and, and desperately needing things to go right, he goes posting in to tie it and bar down to win it. And that's, <laughs> it's, that's his ninth game-winning goal of the year. And some people say uh, game-winning goals means with less than plus-minus because... You can score the fourth goal in an 8-3 win and you got the winning goal. And yeah, there are cases like that. And there are cases of plus minus. There's a case of every stat where you don't really... Do you think Alex Chason deserved the goal that he was credited with tonight? I mean, sometimes <laughs> stuff happens, right? Yeah. But Leon's been scoring, you know, he got a couple in overtime. Those are clear game winners. And, and breaking ties in the third period, to me, that's what you, that's the epitome of a game winning goal. And this is at least the second time this year because he did... Same thing in Vancouver... Um, uh, beginning in December, the Oilers had lost two straight. They went to Vancouver and they desperately needed something good to happen. And they were down 2 1 in the third that night. And Leon scored the tying and winning goals in that game to win it 3 2, just like tonight. Like, took the team, you know, from a scoring standpoint, took the team on his back and, and, and produced, you know, both points in terms of goal scoring. Now, he did have help. And I'm not sure what your second good thing is, but, uh, I'll get to that then. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, with Dreisaitl, he was just, uh, there's nothing that makes a coach look smarter than that kind of shooting, eh? <laughs> Putting it in off the post, suddenly mm. the coach looks, and there's nothing that makes a coach look dumber than super bad bounces in the defensive slot. And the Oilers needed, like, I, this is my theory that, that I've been talking about, that the game's decided by a couple great plays, a couple bad bounces uh, <laughs> each game. And the bad bounce, obviously, for Nashville came, with that puck off the skate of Duchesne, was it? Who was Kyle it? Kyle Turris. Kyle Turris. With uh, seven, was it eight seconds left? Lifeline. So sweet. So sweet, Bruce. Well, we've had, we seem to have more of those go against us than for us. So it's nice to get one once in a while where it's just yeah. sheer dumb luck that the puck goes in the net. And that was one of those. I wonder if it's like, because I feel the same way as you that the orders have more bad bounces than good ones, but maybe that's just confirmation. Maybe it really we're sticks fans. in our head. It could we're be confirmation. Of the yeah, because we're fans of the team. And, and we just, we just, it just makes such a huge impact in that when those terrible things happen and we don't forget it. But when we get a lucky bounce, we're just focused on all the, well, there was lots of other good things on that play. And that's, that's what we notice as right. opposed to the, uh, the uh, lucky bounce, but that was all lucky bounce. That was like ninety percent lucky bounce. That goal. Well, it was ho hockey Gord stepping through a little bit because Edmonton did not deserve to be down two nothing after the second period. I didn't think maybe Nashville deserved the lead, but I didn't think they deserved a two goal lead. And after uh, after they scored late in the second, I mean two nothing. It was uh oh, this looks like three three games in a row with no points, an entire week with no points, which is killer. And they had to come back and get something done. Well, to come back all the way to not only win it, but even to do so in regulation, that, you know, they're five points up on Nashville now. That's that's huge. That's sweet. All, all hail the hockey gourds. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, my good thing was Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Bruce. He mm -hmm. has found <laughs> himself on the wing with Leon Dreisaitl and Kyler Yamamoto. And, 
And again, Connor McDavid by now must be super freaking jealous <laughs> about the line mate situation here. Because, yeah. um, I mean, uh, Leon Dreisaitl's, he's the lead leading lead leading scorer, correct? If I'm not, if I'm not. Yes, mistaken. he is. Yeah. So, and this has come when he's been put with Yamamoto and RNH. And Bruce, I, I'm starting to think if this doesn't change, and it could change with James Neal coming back, but I'm starting to think there may be a trade that may be in the offing here where, you, where you're going to move one of Larson or Benning or Russell um, with some other stuff to try to get a winger on it with a couple of years left on his contract. And I, I think those, those moments, you know, this, I wasn't saying this a while ago, but I'm starting to think this. And I think when you have a surplus of defense and you have Evan Bouchard on the farm team and you need people who can put the puck on net from the point and you have a, First center like Connor McDavid, you might have to address that. Anyway, we'll get into that more. But Ryan Nugent Hopkins, um, he made an absolutely fantastic defensive play in the third period on Victor Arvidsson coming into the slot. That would have been a goal, I think. I think Arvidsson had the goal he beat. Yeah. Um, going across the net and, and RNH, just the little, the you know, just the pushing and effort he put in there, he was able to stop that play. Bruce, he made nine major contributions to grade A scoring chances this game. Any player who gets 10, any player oh, who's got five good. grade A five major contributions good. to grade A, that's, you, you've had a good, you've had a good game offensively. If you get up to seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, you're really cooking. And so Nugent Hopkins, that was probably his best offensive game of the year in, in, the, in that regard. Um, he 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 went. He did the full dry sidle, whipping the cross oh. ice backhand pass to Leon on the rush. That was beautiful. Leon and, on uh, the receiving end of a Leon pass. That's, yeah. that's a dream, man. Yeah, and he set up <laughs> he set up dry sidle for the winner. So I just I really love Nugent Hopkins on the wing. I loved him with McDavid on the wing. I think he is a winger. Um, truth be told, he's an in, very interesting winger um, because he's more of a passer than a shooter. But um, I don't like his defensive play in the slot as a center. I think he's quite a strong defensive winger, though. And um, he just had a he just had a good game, a, a great game. I gave him an eight and dry yeah, settled yeah. a nine. I've already posted yeah, the yeah. game grades and dry yeah. settled got a nine and Nugent eight. I bet you. I'm what would you have given him? Hundred percent on board on both grades. That's yeah. exactly where I would have gone with that. It's like okay. last Saturday night. Yeah. And Do you have anything on? Nugent? I'm sorry. Anything on Nugent you wanted to add? Oh, uh, just. Um, uh, the beauty of that backhand pass hitting his teammate on the tape aerial all the way, you know, from one sideboards to the other wing was, I mean, Vion made the pass of the year to McDavid on a play just like that last year. And this was, I uh, was pretty close to as uh, inch perfect of a, of a play. And of course, Vion went in and buried it to, uh, to make sure it stays on the highlight reels. And that'll be, uh, that'll be one to, to enjoy. You know how good that pass was, Bruce. That there was like five ten, broken, ten. five, uh, five broken clipboards suddenly came together and were whole again, based <laughs> on that pass from R and H to Dreisaitl. That's what happened in that moment. You go check those clipboards. You think they're broken? They're not broken anymore. All right, your bad thing. Well, I, I, I'm going to be uh, your bad thing and mine. We're going to be the same. So I'm going to pick something that maybe is a bit petty. I don't know. If it's Sportsnet. I mean, ultimately, this is a very, very good thing. Now, Conor McDavid got up and he finished the game. And it was a very worrisome moment when he clipped skates with uh, Dante Fabro and went crashing left knee first into the boards. Uh, and he got up wincing and favoring his knee a little bit. And then they went to a TV timeout. And they came back from the TV timeout, and I'm sure I'm one of every Oilers fan who was watching that game, bar none, who's saying, is he okay or not? And they come back, and they show the replay of him getting hurt, or the, the, the hit, yeah. him clipping skates. And then they go and they show the replay of Giordano tripping him into the net in Calgary and them helping him off the ice in Calgary. And I'm just going, I've seen that 4,000 times. Just tell me he's okay. And it's, it's like sports now. It's like, like they don't connect with what the fans need to know in that moment. I was just getting frantic watching that, to be honest with you. I'm going, I don't need to, I know what happened like eight months ago. Tell me what's happening right freaking now. Brutal. Anyway, after 45 seconds of Giordano replays, 
I finally got to the bench and showed McDavid, you know, still there. And uh, anyway, I mean, part of it is, I mean, I'm sure we're all paranoid after watching what, what everything he went through. But that, that such an innocuous play, uh, and yet it was potentially, you know, just, just yeah. Anyway, it's. Bruce. I think they need to clue in a little bit and sort of say he's going to be okay, but we'll show you now. We'll show you what happened. <laughs> so, so when I'm watching the game and I'm doing both scoring chances and game grading, I don't watch the stuff in between the play. I just watch the play. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. usually even watch the highlights. I'm just watching the play itself. But hadn't we already seen McDavid by then rush in and get a great chance by then? Um, no, like no, because because Drew finished, was saying Drew was saying someone was shift. Drew was no, saying someone was wrong with when, his leg, and then but then he came and. Did that, that was play later. Had that to was like back. five minutes later, and he's oh, okay. already gotcha. played three or four shifts. And out of nowhere, Amanda decides to say, "Well, the puck's in play. I got bad news for you, Oilers fans. It's not looking good with McDavid." And then he immediately took the puck and went <laughs> through the team. I thought, "Okay, eat those words, Drew." Uh, I mean, uh, anyway, I thought Drew actually recovered. Still, yeah, he did. He yeah, he, he owned it. He did own it. I'll yeah, he that. did. He did well with that moment. He had a <laughs> he had a chuckle on his own behalf. So. Yeah, well, that's the way to play. A little, little bit of self-deprecation is never a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's not. Something I learned as a child. As a child? Yes. How did you learn that as a child? <laughs> and I didn't learn that till I was in my 30s. I wish I had learned it as a child. <laughs> yeah, well. It's good. You, you, the same day you learn piss on a plate, they, they <laughs> taught you about self-deprecation. All right. <clears throat> Bruce, uh, my bad thing, Darnell Nurse. If he's going for a good... <laughs> A new contract right now, man, that game was not like everything his detractors say about Darnell Nurse was evident in that game. I just saw the game th- through that filter all night long. Yeah, usually I, I see the usually I see the game through the filter. Darnell Nurse is a pretty damn good player and he's very effective out there. Tonight I saw it through that filter of like the, these Euler fans who don't like Darnell Nurse think he should be traded right now and and have all these problems with his game. And that's how I saw his game exactly tonight. It was full of turnovers, icings, lack of offensive creati- creativity, and, and a couple bonehead plays, starting with the first shift of the game, Bruce. His mm-hmm. first shift of the game, he breaks his stick in the neutral zone, then he's backing up right by his own player's bench into his own zone. He's backing up to defend into his own zone. All he has to do is what Caleb Jones did later in the game when he was coming back. He just went, came back hard, grabbed the stick, and was back and was right in the play. What does Dar- Darnell Nurse do? He just backed right into his own zone. He doesn't have his stick. And what happens? Three bang bang grade A scoring chances because he doesn't have a stick and can't clear it in the slot. Like that is a that is a, a brain cramp. So this is one of the things he's accused of. He just had a really rancid game. He took it, he got beat on the rush by Ryan Johansson on a bull rush. He got beat to the net. Like that's the thing Darnell Nurse has got to have. He's got to be stronger and faster on that than any other player because that's his game. And he wasn't even making those plays. And and again, him and Larson, their lack of ons- offensive creativity at the point. In an NHL where that kind of puck play by the defenseman is kind of, you got to do it. You got to have that in your repertoire. You just can't be the big plotting um, defensive defenseman anymore. And I think a lot of teams are looking for those defensemen and bringing them in and stocking their team with them. But Nurse, the puck goes to him at the point in the offensive zone and it's always rim it around the boards or fire it right at the net. And, and, and he has the ability, if he works at that, if he, I don't know, maybe he does this, but like do 50 to a hundred reps a summer of taking the puck off the boards, wheeling into the middle of the ice and getting a point shot, going back and forth, just work on that offensive move. It's a fairly simple play. He can, I'm sure he can execute it. He's just got to put his mind to executing it. And I'd like to see that. Yeah. Well, I see more offensively out of him, but he's certainly a very unconventional offensive player. As yes. a defenseman. He gets points by, by joining the play and 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 um, being a fourth man in the rush and, and stuff and, and uh, contributing to getting it towards the net. Uh, it's not always a sick pass once in a while, but uh, uh, his defensive game. I mean, tonight there was a play in the third period where he broke his stick also, and he just stood by the boards, and he was about 15 feet from the bench, and he was just standing there, and Remenda saying, man, you just got to go to the bench and get a stick. It was just like the play you described earlier. And the one that I saw that had me just shaking my head was in the first period, and 
the or the puck was in the neutral zone, and the orders were trying to change on the fly. And Nurse was one of the guys who just came on the ice. Like he has to know there's a line change in progress because he's literally just come on the ice to replace the guy. And the forwards are changing behind him, and the other defenseman's changing behind him. And he gets to center, uh, which is, I mean, the the play at center on a line change. Get it deep. Get it deep. And what does he do? He tries a backhand sauce pass diagonal that gets picked off in the neutral zone and Nashville's going the other way. Now, it, it, in the end, it didn't amount to anything, but it was just like, you know, that's just, it's a fundamental error of judgment of what's the upside of making this sauce pass to a teammate outside the blue line on the other team. Even if the pass is made, what, what what's it going to do? What happens if it isn't made? You know, it's like, you know, that sideline pass that your quarterback wants to make in football, right? You make it, you get a six-yard gain. If you don't make it, the other team gets six points. <laughs> you know, you got you to pick your spots. And that, that was just... So I've been defending Nurse, and I know he takes a lot of bashing out there for his decision-making. And frankly, some of it... Sometimes I wonder where the commentary is coming from, frankly. And so I, I'm a little bit defensive about the player because I do think, and I will say right now, he brings lots of good things to the game. But he is a high-event player. He does make... Uh, uh, he does make mistakes. He does make poor decisions. You know, in tonight's game, Darren, like his stats line is incredible. He had uh, three shots, six shot attempts, five hits, two giveaways, two takeaways, five block shots. Like that's just enormous um, crooked numbers across the sheet uh, for being involved in the game. But as you say, they're, they're, you, you got to have a, you know, a net positive in that involvement, and I'm not sure we got that. I mean, there was that also that play where Matt mm-hmm. Duchesne walked right around him, and he had to tug him. And my wife's saying, well, that's a good penalty. And I'm saying, well, from where I sit, it shouldn't be a penalty at all if he hadn't got beat on, you know, he had good position on the one-on-one, and the guy just walked right around him, and then what? he tugged him. Wasn't that Johansson? Uh, I think it was Matt Duchesne, but... Oh, I could be wrong. Um, I'll have to look at that. Yeah, Bruce, I, I, I was tempted to give him a two, but I gave him a three. Um, oh. Maybe I should have given him a two. Definitely <laughs> a three. Yeah, yeah. There, there was too many, too many, uh, uh, too many things that went the wrong way in that game on on Darnell for sure. And not on the stats line, but in the cult of hockey boutique stats that we keep on yep. uh, major, major contributions and mistakes on grade A scoring chances. He was he made three major mistakes on grade A scoring chances against, and that's. Um, that's not good. So uh, not his best game. You know, I usually give him, I, you know, most games this year, I bet you I've given him a six or a seven. I'm a, I'm a big Darnell Nurse fan. I think for that type of defenseman, I mean, I did a whole post on this earlier mm-hmm. where I looked at that type of defenseman. Yep. And, and, you know, with the, the, when, when those guys get to their UFA years, like Jacob Truba and Oliver Ekman Larson, and, and some people rec- recoil at the comparison of Ekman Larson to Nurse, but I think it's a fair one. Mm-hmm. Um because I don't think Ekman Larson has that really, really high end offensive game either. Honestly, I don't, the, the points aren't there and he gets the power play time that nurse doesn't, but they, those guys get paid and they get paid a lot And Petrie and uh, Eric Johnson um, also in that kind of class of defenseman, they mm-hmm. got paid very well. So he, you know, I think he's going to get, you know, it's going to be somewhere between 6.5 million and 8 million when he finally does sign that long-term contract per year. And he's going to, he's probably going to earn it, but he, he can still, there's still areas of his game that, that he can improve on. And I, and I think that one, you know, one of the obvious ones is just that point shot. Cause you're right. He does have a, he's got a hell of a shot when he can have time and space to, to unleash it. But um, he's got to get better at that kind of clever shot. Cause he's got the reach. He's not that much. I mean, he's smaller than Brent Burns, but not a whole heck of a lot smaller. And he could, he should be able to make that really clever play on net. And he's not doing it right now. Bruce, what is your number? Well, I'm going to go off the off of our usual charts now to uh, um, uh, natural statric on the game tonight, and they had uh, uh, scoring chances against, and uh, the Oilers' uh, first line with McDavid and uh, uh, Gagne and Chason. And this was a new experiment trying to find wingers for Connor. Well, I think they found 
Uh, maybe a pair of wingers that aren't for Connor. Darn it! I'm trying to bring this game up now. I'll have it in a second, but they were they were just blitzed, and their shot totals were atrocious. And uh, do, 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 Sam Gagne, uh, yeah, they were outshot nine to four, outscored two goals to zero when he was on the ice, and. High danger scoring chances on Sam's watch, 0 4 8 against. And Ooh. outscored 2 0. And I'm pretty sure you assigned an error to Sam on both goals. I did, yeah. And, and one horrible, yeah. And Chase on wasn't much better at 0 4 and 6 against on high danger chances. Uh, he did get the one fluke power play goal, of course, but at even strength, uh, he got clobbered. And. Um, he made you you assign him with a major mistake on one of the goals, and on the other one, I think he also made a mistake where he batted a, a pass down out of the air and basically caused a turnover to Nashville. Uh, you know, it wasn't an intentional, um, didn't work out the way he intended, let's put it that way. But it wound up making a real nice, <laughs> nice knockdown of a flying puck that worked out for the other team, and they went in and scored. So, a pretty rough night for both of those guys, and Connor. Uh, was uh, kind of kind of playing with his arms tied behind his back uh, tonight. With uh, you know they they just weren't executing. Sam made a brutal turnover on the second goal, right inside the Edmonton blue line. Where yeah, that was he missed this he missed his spot on the breakout pass and went right to the point point man and he shot and the guy tipped it in. I think it was just like that. It was in right away. It was Ham Hughes, I think it was. Yeah, that was brutal. Uh, so those two guys, unfortunately, I have to say they failed their test tonight, their chance to show that they're the ones to uh, take the ice time with Gagne while while uh, Leon Dreisaitl hogs the best wingers on the team on his line. <laughs> Leon the hog Dreisaitl. Uh, Bruce, <laughs> I think it, it's a tactical mistake. Just like it, just I think Tippett's got it wrong twice in a row. He's had... Archibald and Cassian together, and he's had Chase on and Gagne together. Mix them up. You you want to have the one energy player, Archibald or Cassian, and the one more skilled player, Gagne or Chase on. And I just think, just I th- I think if he made that mix, like Gagne with Cassian and and McDavid, or Archibald with Chase on and McDavid, like I think that might work. But it's just uh, one of my many thoughts about hockey. Uh, Bruce, my number is twelve. And we don't often see a number like this. It's not a record. I think we've seen as high as 16 or 17. But that might have been the under the old system that we used. But he, 12 major contributions to grade A scoring chances for me, Leon Dreisaitl tonight. Oh. That's like four games worth. That is, that is, yeah. What a, what a fantastic game. And what a fantastic player. We are so lucky night in, night out to see Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid play. They have the odd bad game and the odd bad play, which we don't hesitate to point out here. But um, what a spectacular game he had. He just driving the game. I thought he was strong right from the start, start and driving, driving, driving that Oiler attack, combining so well. It is such a treat to be able to watch Nugent Hopkins, Yamamoto, and Drysaddle. And just imagine this. Imagine if the Oilers had top line with McDavid, if he could find equal chemistry. Let's say it's with Cassian and they got to make a trade for another winger or have some other winger develop. Just imagine that if the Oilers had two lines like that, because that line right now, their passing is, again, I'm going to compare it to Red Army, Soviet era kind of passing, reading of the game. Three smart players with great hands and great heads for hockey working together, and they just continually make fantastic plays in the offensive zone. It's a treat to watch. It's something that most NHL teams don't have. And we are lucky in Edmonton to have it right now. It's and I, I'd hate to see them broken up, but I, I can see the day when maybe Nuge has moved to play with McDavid and Cassian, and Yamamoto and Drysaddle are paired with someone else. Maybe Neil on the on the second line, just to balance things out. Well, yeah, I, I can understand Tippett's reluctance to break that line up the way that yeah. they're going. And, you know, they helped win the game for Oilers tonight, you know. And he, even the game-winning power play goal was scored in a four-on-three where McDavid was in the box. 
So I was saying to my wife, you know, usually the four on three part is a better chance. And when both guys come out of the box to make it five on four, uh, it, you know, it's, it's less of a good power play chance. But if McDavid is the fifth guy coming out of the box, I don't mind it. But they never got that far because I put the puck in the net in about 15 or 20 seconds of the four on three. They just executed right away. Bam. And that, of course, was the, uh, uh, the game winner. 17 seconds into the power play. That was in the net. What a great shot that was. Oh, He's a just a lethal one-timer from the slot, the right circle, wherever. Just, just hard and heavy and on the net, and sometimes even off, off. You know, he's hit a lot of posts this year. Tonight he hit two, or it went on off the, went off the metal and into the net. So that's that's an he's account just, coming due, maybe. <laughs> he's just absolutely killer with that shot. So, Bruce, what is the next game? Well, they play on Tuesday night uh, against Chicago. Another team that's on the sort of yeah. lower cusp of the Western Conference playoffs and the wild card race. And to their credit, like it, early in the year, it looked like they were not going to be in it at all. And, and they've got, uh, uh, they've come on strong. And so they're probably a better team than their record because they were digging their way out of quite of a hole. So that's going to be another tough game, and that's the nature of the beast right now. You get up in the standings, and you you wind up playing a bunch of desperate teams that are just below you, and they've uh, you know after losing a couple in a row to 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 come back and take this one tonight was huge. But ideally, you walk out of this three-game homestand with four points now. So Bruce Drysdale has eighty-five points in fifty-five games. Yep. McDavid eighty-one and fifty-five. Nuge yep. thirty-nine and forty-nine. <laughs> and Kyler Yamamoto twelve points in fourteen games. Zero point eight six points per game. Bruce and that, he's not playing the power play. He is not playing the power play. He is he like if you if you I don't know if you just looked at NHL forwards over one hundred and fifty minutes for a sample size like that. Or he might he might be mm-hmm. up to two hundred. Um, for points per minutes, even strength, he may be leading the league at this point. So, um, an even strength uh, point scoring rate because he's he's up there like three point five for every uh, sixty minutes of uh, even strength play. So good for Kyler Yamamoto. Well, Bruce, yeah, well, 85, 81, Pasternak's got seventy seven, McKinnon seventy five, Panarin seventy two. Nobody else has as many as seventy. So there's a quite a little split there, and and Leon's. Holding his own. You keep thinking, oh, like, he's a temporary placeholder until Connor roars past him, but it hasn't been happening, and it's still not happening. And nights like tonight, it's you know, it's uh, there's been a few nights where Leon's been the major guy that, and you know, first star honors as a result and well earned. And um, you know, one final note: he's got that solid, solid build. Like he, you know, knock on wood, he doesn't get hurt. Every player can get hurt, but Ovechkin hasn't been hurt that much. And Dreisaitl seems to me he's kind of got that that thickness that, that might make him. He's been very durable so far, and hopefully that will continue. Bruce, uh, thanks for talking tonight. Thanks very much. Yeah, a quick shout-out for Mike Smith, who was very good tonight. And uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, we didn't even mention that huge save that Smith made in the uh, early in the second period on the uh, power play. Uh, when that guy was wide open in front of the net, Grandland. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And thank you to the mute button tonight, which uh, I think has spared both you, Bruce, and our listeners from my constant coughing. So, good stuff. Talk to everybody later.